Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight, we're going to be reading of Psalm 36, 8. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. Let's go there. And the whole verse says, They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. Let's go up here. One, two, three, four, five. We might as well just start in verse 1. How precious is your steadfast love. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, an oracle within my heart concerning the transgression of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for he flatters himself in his own eyes when he finds out his iniquity and when he hates. The words of his mouth are wickedness and deceit. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. He devises wickedness on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not abhor evil. Your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the great mountains. Your judgments are a great deep. O Lord, you preserve man and beast. How precious is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of your wings. Therefore, or sorry, they are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your pleasures. It's peace that defies all understanding. We're happy with what we have. We're content. Verse 9, for with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Notice he talks about those that believe, not everybody. When people go around there and say to people who are full of hate, sinful, Jesus loves you. No. They, at that time, are the enemies of God. He offers them salvation to bring them into his love. Verse 11, let not the foot of pride come against me, and let not the hand of the wicked drive me away. There are the workers of iniquity have fallen. They have been cast down and are not able to rise. I love the Psalms. The Psalms are so good and poetic and proclaim all of these things, including the gospel. Funny enough, the gospel is in the Psalms a couple of times. Sheba's queen was amazed at the sumptuousness of Solomon's table. She lost all heart when she saw the provision of a single day. Now, this is interesting because there was such a profound effect of the blessings of God on his people to the queen of Sheba. I believe the Ethiopian eunuch was a part, not of her specifically, because this was a long time after, but I believe he was a part of that particular royal uh, royalty. And he may have actually been a, 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 a well, very direct descendant of somebody who served under that royalty. She was amazed at the sumptuousness of Solomon's table. She lost all heart when she saw the provision of a single day. And she marveled equally at the company of servants who were feasted at the royal board. But what is this to the hospitalities of the God of grace? 10,000 thousand of his people are daily fed. Hungry and thirsty, they bring large appetites with them to the banquet, but not one of them returns unsatisfied. There is enough for each, enough for all, enough for evermore. What, what is he talking about? What banquet is he referring to? The word of God. Though the host that feed at Jehovah's table is countless as the stars of heaven, yet each one has his portion of meat. Think how much grace one saint requires, so much that nothing but the infinite could supply him for one day, and yet the Lord spreads his table not for one, but many saints. Not for one day, but for many years. Not for many years only, but for generation after generation. There is no limit to the mercy and grace of God. Observe the full feasting spoken of in the text. The guests at Mercy's banquet are satisfied. Nay, more, abundantly satisfied. And that not with ordinary fare, but with fatness. The peculiar fatness of God's own house. And such feasting is guaranteed by a faithful promise to all those children of men who put their trust under the shadow of Jehovah's wings. I once thought if I might but get the broken meat at God's back door of grace... I should be satisfied. Like the woman who said the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. But no child of God is ever served with scraps and leavings. 
like Mephibosheth. They all eat from the king's own table. In matters of grace, we all have Benjamin's mess. We all have ten times more than we could have expected. And though our necessities are great, yet are we often amazed at the marvelous plenty of grace which God gives us experimentally to enjoy. Let me ask you a question. There are people listening that have a lot of stuff, and they look down on their friends and their even their family that are Christians that don't seem to do very well. But here's the difference between a person that has a lot of temporal things and a person that has a lot of spiritual things. We have what we need. We are more than taken care of in this life. They have tons of stuff and don't know what to do with all of it. Ask anybody, especially you find him here in Texas, ask anybody for all the toys that they have and the stuff that they have and they'll tell you, I, I hate it. I shouldn't have bought all this because it cost me so much money to maintain it. They're always worried about it. People that have a lot of money, they're always worried about their investments. They spend a while away the hours not conferring with the flowers like Wizard of Oz, but checking their stocks to make sure that they're making money. And they're not happy unless they have made more than any one man should have. The difference is we're richer than they are because we have peace. Though we may not have what people think we should have, though we may not be doing as good as they think we should be doing, we're doing far greater than they are because we have peace. We have joy. We have love. We have things better than what they have it, and they don't realize it. And they look at us and see that there's depression and sadness. They look at us and they see that we may struggle, health issues. Look at you. God's done nothing for you. Oh, I beg to differ, friend. He's done a great more for me than he has for you. I see the stress on your face. I see your knee bouncing up and down. I see you fidgeting constantly. I see you unable to complete a conversation. You have to eat and run, so to speak, because you have so many things you have to tend to in a day. You don't have time to stop and smell the roses. I do. In fact, I can pull over and sit in the flowers all day. Because God provides what I need temporarily. And he has given me so much more and made me rich in spiritual things that I have surpassed you in wealth. Because what you so desperately need, you don't have. And I have more than enough. So when they say, look at you, you're trailer trash. Look at you, you're situated. Yeah, you could do better. You could do way better. I can show you what to do. Oh, no, I'm doing fine, actually. No, I'm looking at you. Yeah, but there's things that I have that you don't see. Oh, you're one of those that has a lot of money but doesn't show it. No, no. My treasure is laid up in the bank of Jesus Christ. And when I get my dividend check for my investments, it pays me so much more than you could even imagine. It pays me more than you could possibly help because I'm happy. I'm content. Even in my want and need, I'm happy and content because I have something better waiting. This life is grand, but there's a life even better on the other side. And so whether the table is full of food or we just have bread and water, it is still bountiful because with that bread and water comes, oops, with that bread and water comes spiritual happiness, joy, love shed abroad in our hearts. I would rather have a pitiful life with a sad day full of depression, but be walking with the Lord than to have everything this life has to offer and then sometimes 10 but not know where I'm going after I die. Because the greatest stress, the greatest torment for any person is not knowing what's after this and always wondering what happens when I die and doing everything they can to hold it off as long as possible.
We know where we're going after this. We know what's waiting after this. And we have a book that tells us in <laughs> surprising detail what's going to happen. But even in that, there are surprises. Things that even we don't know. And it gives us great hope to look forward to them. Because if you've already known them, there's nothing to hope for. That's what tickles me about all these people that said they went to heaven and saw all these things. Some people multiple times a day. Okay? Then you have no hope because you've seen it. The Bible says if we've seen it, there's no hope. We have hope because we haven't seen it. They call us poor, but we're richer than anybody on the earth. We're richer than all the people put together on the earth that are rich. That's just one of us. This earth is shown great mercy and grace right now because we're here. The Lord holds back the core of his judgment. The Lord holds back his wrath because we are still here. The earth is blessed because we're here. And that sounds like a prideful statement, but the Bible confirms it. But when the restrainer is removed, the Lord then pours out everything all at once. Brothers and sisters, no matter what situation you're in, you are richer than the next guy. You are richer than the one beside you. Don't ever let anybody convince you you have little. In this life, you have much. They want worldly things. Let them have the world. We have heaven. We are citizens of heaven. There's a city that's going to come down on the new earth, out of the new heaven, called New Jerusalem, that only we will be allowed to enter. The Bible says in the book of Revelation that there are people that are going to be outside, not allowed to come in. Only we will be allowed in. Only those that are his will be allowed in. That's amazing. And that's nothing, because what comes after that is eternity. And we have no idea what the Lord has laid up for us in that eternity. Well, we are rich beyond measure. No matter what we have or don't have, if we have him, we are rich beyond measure. Amazing. So don't ever look on your situation and think that you have less than the next guy. Don't be, the Bible says don't be jealous of what your neighbor has. Be content with what you have. Because it could vastly change the person watching you that sees you live for God and glory in Him and what He has laid up for you. Because they could suddenly realize, you know what? All this stuff I have is nothing. I want what they have. You want what I have? Yes. What is it that you have? Jesus Christ. Oh, I don't believe in that stuff. You can't trust that. Well, you just said you wanted what I have. That's what I have. I have him, and he has me. So if you want this, if you want this level of contentment and happiness, you've got to go to him. Because there is no other place to get this. There's not enough money in the world to buy it. Never will be. Fill the, all of creation with money, and it's not enough. There's not enough food in, the, in all of creation to satisfy you. There's not enough nothing. It is all contained within Jesus Christ. He is greater than the sum of all his creation. And at the center of that is him. We are rich beyond measure. And we have that in our Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, you're being given an honor and a privilege that no other entity has ever been offered to become children of God. That's incredible. I look forward to the day when I stand in heaven. I get to see him with my eyes. I get to worship him and to hear the thunderous, thunderous cries of all his children. My brothers and sisters. I look forward to getting to sit and listen to all the testimonies. And to listen to my Lord share with me the things I missed in this book. All the wonderful things I missed in this book. And so much more that I've ne I never learned and couldn't grasp or wasn't ready for it. And then to take my position wherever he puts me. 
Poor? No, not even close. Rich? Nope, not even close. Born again. Saved. That's rich. Having salvation, that's rich. Rich is beyond, beyond your wildest dreams. Queen of Sheba was, was surprised at what she saw in Solomon's table. Woo! I hope she got saved until she sees God's table. Because what God has done in blessing his people here is nothing compared to what awaits us up there. Everything on the earth, everything in the earth is a shadow of heaven. Wait till we get there and see there. Amazing. It actually gives me goosebumps and chills to think about it. It excites me to think about it, that pretty soon we're going to get to see our Lord. And see what he has done. To see his heaven. Hang on, brothers and sisters. Time is wrapping up here. Do what you know you have to do, but hang on to the future in Jesus Christ. Hang on to hope. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these being love. You have those three things. You're good. You're covered. You're right where you should be. And be in the Word of God every day to remind yourself of those things. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray that our Lord Jesus Christ blesses you all richly and to overflowing in all things good and godly. In his name, amen. I'll see you guys in the next video.